was healed by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, for grace and all is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, and as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion when we come to the glory of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus, the Spirit of the Amen. In the name of the Lord, 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 Emi de luce antum libertatum tu mipsum de luce antum 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 de in tuoi volatari dei, ai dei incredificati di un tutto mai un, al ricordo nostro in nome dei nomi di cui fece cielo e terra. Confiti il vero e potente divino di Maria, se vi dico di adoitare e tanti, di rubi a tua battista, tanti posti, spetti e colori a tua, Maria, di anni, ogni santi, non di tua te, tu e verità di nimi scogitazione, vero e dopo, re me o culpa, me o culpa, me al massimo a culpa. E io prego beata Maria, mi sento di giugno, mi beato, mi cai, ma te angelo, mi beato, mi vanno a spista, mi tanto tu posso spettere, mi vanno a beato, mi vanno a via, mi piano, mi vanno a me, tanto tu posso fare, ora non è come, e dormo del nostro. E se io tutti i miei potenti sei, si fosse stati tu, mi spero che te e vita ne sarà. Amen. Confiti, io dei uomini potenti, beate Maria, sempre di giugno, beate mi cai, a te angelo, beato io, anni, va a spista, Sancti Apostoli, Spetro e Paolo, Omnibus Sancti, se ti li fate, qui è per trovi nimi, scogitazione, verbo ed opere. Meo culpa, meo culpa, meo maxima culpa. Ed io prego, beata Maria, un sempre di giugno, beato Michael Marcangelo, beato Johann Battista, Sancti Apostoli, Spetro e Paolo, Omne Sancti, se te li fate, ora di come è ad ogni verbo. Misericordia, vesti, mi potenza, e vesti, 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 e v Dopo ai pari dei testimoni, i tuoi si conspetto re come don profondeva, re verità va rimandati i tuoi, spedi le ex gloi minis, ora ves compiteri domino e seller e nomini tu altissime. Gloria, Patria, Figlio e Spirito e Santo, si poderati principio e non che sempre, ed in secula seculorum, Amen. Dopo ai pari dei testimoni, i tuoi si conspetto re come don profondeva, e verità va rimandati i tuoi, spedi le ex minis. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax omnibus vole voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, Grazie a Gesù, ti vi porto te mando un gloria a tua. Domine Deus, vex celestis, Deus Pater, Odipotens, 
Domine filiunis genitei Iesu Christe. Nobile Deus, Agnus Dei, filius Patris, qui tolis peccatu mundi miserere nobis, qui tolis peccatu mundi suscitae deprecationem nostram, qui senes et exeram Patris miserere nobis. Quoniam tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, tu solus altissimus Iesu Christe, cum sancto spiritu in gloria Dei Patris. Amen. Axa vobis et cum spirito tuo. Ordemus. Sancti Iovannis Baptiste, precursis et martiris tui, faesimus Domine venerante festivitas, salutaris auxilii nobis preset e fecum, qui vivis arrenas cum Deo Pati in unitatis Spiritus Sancti Deus, erum ia secula seculorum. Amen. Ordemus. Deus, qui intercete la potenzia tua miracula etiam in sexu fragili victoria martiri contristi, concede propitius, ut que verate sabine martiris tui natelita acolimus, per Deus et te exemple gradiamur, per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum finium tuum, qui tecum vivit a regna ad unanetati Spiritus Sancti Deus, per ogni secula seculorum. Amen. Lexio Jeremie Profete, e ne ai musilis, factum es verbum domini ad medicenis, ad cinge lungus tuos et surge et loco erre ad iod omnia quae ergo precipio tibi. Ne formide esa face eorum, ne cae intimere te faciem vultum eorum, ego qui vedeni te hodi in civitatem unitam, et in columnam feriam, et in murmum eriam, super omnem teram, regibus iuda, principibus eus, et sacerdotibus, et populo tere. Et velabunt et vesum te, et non prevelebunt, quia ego te cum sum, ae Dominus, ut liberem te. Neo gratias. Iussus, o famo flore, visi cucetus libani multiplicabitor in domo Domini, ad enunciam dum mane misericordiam tuam, et veritatem tuam te noctem. Alleluia, alleluia. Iussus, geminavit sicut lilium, et flore, vit in eternum ante Dominum. Alleluia. Dominus Vobiscum, et cum Spirito Tuo, sequentia Sancti Vangelii, secundum Marcum, Gloria Tibi Domine. In ino tempore, misi Herodes, ac tenio et Ioannem, et principe eum in carcere, prote Herodiade, mux ordem Filipi fratis sui, cui adus erat eam. Dicevat elem Ioannis Orodi, non licet Tibi Haberium sorum fratis tui. Herodias autim in siriabatur ili, et volebat occidere eum nec poterat, Herodes enim et uevat Iovanem, scienza eum virum justum et sanctum, e custodievat eum aut alpito eum multa facievat et libente eum audievat. Et cum dies opportunis acidissit, Herodes natalis sui cenum feci principibus et tribunis et primis Galilei. Conque introisit filie Ipsius Herodiadis, esaltasset et facuquisit Herodit simulque recompensibus, ex et pulei. Pete a me quod vis et abutibi. Et iuravit ili, quia qui quid pezieris da abutibi, dicet timidium regni me. Quae cum exisit, isit matris sue. Quid petam? Et ila dixit, caput Ioannis Baptiste. Cumque introvisis satim, cum festinazione et regem, pete evit dicent. Volo ut protinus des mici in disco caput Ioannis Baptiste. Et contristatus es rex. Proteus iurandum, et protissimo discombentis non vit eam contristare, sed misus speculatore precepit a feri caput eus in disco, et decolavit eam in carcere. Et altulit caput eus in disco, et edit ilud puele et puele dedit matris sue. Quo audito discipuli eus venerunt et fulerunt coprus eus, et pos venerunt ilud in monumento. Las Tivi Christ. This is the Feast of the Decolation of St. John the Baptist, also known as the Beheading of St. John the Baptist. The lesson is taken from the prophet Jeremiah. 
At this time the, word, the Lord's words came to me, Gird up thy loins, bestir thyself, and deliver to Judah all the charge I am giving thee. Do not be afraid of them, as thou wilt not have me shame thee before them. I mean to give thee strength this day, strength as of a fortified city, or iron pillar, or brazen wall, to confront the whole land, princes of Judah and priests and people. All will be their adversaries, but they shall not master thee. I will be at thy side, the Lord says, to bring thee deliverance. And the Holy Gospel is the continuation of that according to St. Mark. At this time, Herod had sent and arrested John and put him in prison in chains for love of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married, because John had told Herod, It is wrong for thee to take thy brother's wife. Herodias was always plotting against him and would willingly have murdered him, but could not, because Herod was afraid of John, recognising him for an upright and holy man so that he kept him carefully and followed his advice in many things and was glad to listen to him. And now came a fitting occasion upon which Herod gave a birthday feast to his lords and officers and to the chief men of Galilee. Herodias, his own daughter, came in and danced and gave such pleasure to Herod and his guests that the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever thou wilt and, sh and thou shalt have it. He even bound himself by an oath. I will grant whatever request thou makest, though it were half of my kingdom. Thereupon she went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? And she answered, The head of John the Baptist. With that she hastened into the king's presence and made her request. My will is, she said, that thou shouldest give me the head of John the Baptist. Give him me now on a dish. And the king was full of remorse, but out of respect to his oath and to those who sat with him at table, he would not disappoint her. So he sent one of his guard with orders that the head should be brought on a dish. This soldier cut off his head in the prison and brought it on a dish and gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. When John's disciples heard of it, they came and carried off his body and laid it in a tomb. Now Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Clarissimi, beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast Mass, as we say on this, the Feast of the Decolation, a posh word for beheading of St. John the Baptist, just as we have heard uh, from <coughs> the proclamation of the Gospel just now. We might, uh, you may recall, uh, a very popular series of uh, films made in the uh, uh, 50s and 60s and 70s, uh, in the United Kingdom, when we still had a film industry here, uh, known as the Carry On Films. Uh, there was a particular film based upon another king who also married his brother's wife and who desired a divorce, none other than, of course, Henry VIII. And I think I recall the title of the film was Carry On, Don't Lose Your Head. Only last evening at supper, after our conference here on Mariology versus Mariolatry, I had reason to recall uh, that my father, uh, on my confirmation day, gifted to me a uh, framed uh, citation. The citation, of course, was of uh, a very popular uh, and wise poem called If written by one Rudyard Kipling. And the line in that has always remained me, or remained with me to this day. And indeed is uh, the basis, I would say, the fundamental principle, as it were, of my general outlook in life, certainly of my regard to pastoral and spiritual matters, and even in theology. And that particular line is, if you can keep your head when all around you are losing theirs. If you can keep your head while all around you are losing theirs. And indeed I have given copies of this poem to the priests that I have ordained and urged them, I've given them pocket wallet sized versions, urged them to keep it on their persons and whenever things go a bit strange and a bit awry to read it and as it were come down to earth, as it were, to centre oneself in reason, 
in rationale, in logic, in objectivity. If all around you are losing their, if you can keep your head when all around you are losing theirs. Now, of course, with regard to Herod, rather than Henry, but with regard to Herod, St. John, of course, had spoken the truth to him, had pointed out to him that it was against God's law that he should take his uh, 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 husband's, his, his brother's uh, wife. And for this, he was, of course, summarily uh, arrested and uh, imprisoned. And then we have this bizarre scenario uh, that plays out. Recall the historical setting. Herod Antipas, the vain, ambitious, weak ruler of several Palestinian sectors, is residing in his rocky fortress near the Dead Sea. He, is, he has become passionately attached to the wife of his brother Herodias and takes her to be his wife. It was an adulterous union and a great scandal to all of the Jews. John the Baptist, who was preaching on the shores of the Jordan towards the Dead Sea, did not remain ignorant of these developments, and fearing nothing, this man with hairy garments and who ate locusts knocked at the palace door and with brief, earnest words stated his purpose. It is not permissible for you to live with the wife of your brother. Such conduct is evil and a great scandal. John's judgment struck like a sword through Herod's heart and left its mark. The king trembled and the Baptist left. Now Herodias was ambitious. She had determined to become queen and to remain queen, to silence the troublesome preacher of penance and to maintain her objectives became her primary occupation day and night. She pursued John with a woman's hate and with the aid of the Pharisees succeeded in having him imprisoned. It was the wicked woman's day of triumph. The Baptist lay chained in the dungeons below the citadel, but Herod had not yet made the ultimate decision. He was weak. At times he heard the voice of conscience. On these occasions he would call the Baptist and speak with him. Such action, however, Herodias must not permit. Herod vacillated. And the woman knew that as long as John lived, her throne would not be secure. John must die. She sought to do away with him secretly. She tried to bribe the soldiers, but they were John's friends. They had heard him preach near the Jordan. Even at court there existed a party friendly to John, and now they appeared to be gaining greater favour. John's imprisonment was made easier. Friends and disciples were permitted to visit him and Herod was thinking of releasing him. Then the great feast day, Herod's birthday. Everything was prepared. On every road, big names were coming to congratulate the king and eat his food. The sound of merriment echoed down into the Baptist's dark prison chamber. Would he too obtain a favor from the king on this day? Perhaps a special meal? No, today at least the executioner would not be on duty. Herod has readied a festal board for his guests. Music, song, mirth. The feast was drawing to an end when a bevy of dancing girls entered in their midst as queen, Salome, the daughter of Herodias. And she staged an exhibition that child Half of his domain not worth that dance? And whose land was it? The promised land, the land where a redeemer was traveling about and preaching penance, purity, to what extremes lust drives? How many barter away for the pleasure of sin, the holy, promised land of their souls? Salome finishes her number. She considers the words and the oath of the king. What should she ask for? Another costume, a pony, a palace for her future husband. She hastens to her mother, who may offer good advice. What should I pick? She says hastily. Her mother need not delay her reply a moment. Without reflection, her answer is immediate. Demand the head of John. The adulterous woman knew her hour. For that moment she had been waiting, and her daughter of like mind does not hesitate. At once she returns to Herod, 
I wish you would give me immediately upon a dish the head of John. Herod starts as from a trance. That kind of a request he had not anticipated. The Gospel says he was struck sad. The terrible surprise had rung a human note within. Before him stood the Baptist's pallid figure. Herod, however, was not the man who could profit by any noble sentiment. Someone reminds him of his promise, his oath, and he thinks of his guests who rated the appearance of honour higher than conscience. And thus he lost the battle. A bodyguard is summoned and sent to the prisoner. Let us visit the Baptist in his cell. Even there the strains of music, the laughter and cajolery of the feast penetrate. Of what is he thinking? Perhaps his thoughts have gone to Galilee, to the Redeemer. Is he conscious that his last hour is come? He hears footsteps. Is it a message of deliverance from imprisonment on the King's feast day? The bodyguard enters. What are his feelings? Had he perhaps been one of the soldiers who had heard the Baptist preach at the Jordan? The purpose of his presence is quickly stated. John's last moments. The thought of departure from this life did not come too hard for him. His work was ended anyway. Certainly his thoughts turned to the Messiah. Like aged Saint Simeon, he recites life's night prayer. Now, Lord, lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. And his head falls under the stroke of the executioner's axe. The guard brings the bleeding head on the platter to the dining hall. Herod takes it. Would he dare look into those noble eyes? Did he sense the revulsion coming over the guests? He reaches it to his daughter, and she carries it to her mother. A revolting scene. Two monstrous women, mother and daughter, gloating over the blood of a prophet, seemingly amused, victorious, as if the work of the prophet had fallen to the ground with his head. The Gospel tells nothing about a mishandling of the holy head, but rumours circulated that the adulteress was bent on keeping in her possession the tongue of him who did not spare her guilt. Indeed, today's feast actually commemorates the second translation of the head of St John the Baptist, as it had uh, been moved about. And there are several places in which one may venerate uh, the head of St John the Baptist. Uh, not all of them, clearly, his head, but certainly there are fragments. But the question we might ask ourselves, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is perhaps the title of that film I spoke of earlier. Carry on, don't lose your head. For certain, my brothers and sisters, it is very easy for us to identify, I should say, with Herod. Very easy for us to identify, I should say, with Herodias. Indeed, some of us even may identify with Salome. Few of us, sadly, will relate to the character of John in this story. And yet, it is the prophet who loses his head, not the aforementioned sinners. Carry on, don't lose your head. Really, my brothers and sisters, our thought and our answer in response to that suggestion, on the one hand, of course, would be, or should be, I am prepared to lose my head for the sake of the Gospel. We have asked and reflected many times on that question, on the Feast of Martyrs, are we ready to die? Would we happily die for Christ? Would we embrace death with the prospect of heaven? But rather today, I want to suggest that even though the title of the feast is the beheading of St John the Baptist, 
It is not in this story, as it were, he who has lost his head, but actually the others. The others whom we identify with because in so many ways and in so many times we ourselves have similarly lost our heads. Lost our heads to reason. Lost our heads to sense and sensibility. Lost our heads to propriety, sobriety. Lost our heads to passion, to lust. Should have said there, lost our heads to impropriety and insobriety. Lost our heads to, to passion, to lust, to whim, to fancy, to fables, to dreams. Lost our heads to ourselves, self possessed, self obsessed, obsessed. Lost our heads to selfishness lost our heads to ego, to pride, to vanity, lost our heads to despair, lost our heads to depression. How often, my brothers and sisters, have we lost our heads in this way? We see in Herod, we see in Herodias, we see in Salome, those who lose their heads to passion. As we heard the other day from the epistle of St. James, passion breeds sin, sin begets death. For though, again, it is St. John who loses literally his head, he gains eternal life. Indeed, ironically, he gains complete wholeness. He achieves supreme perfection as is realised for him all that God from all eternity had wanted and desired for him but which he also desires for us. To be perfect as he is perfect. To be whole. To be balanced. To not be imbalanced by our passions, not to be carried away by the cares and anxieties of the world, but to find stability, to find equilibrium, seeing and understanding with faith the world for what it is, and recognising and accepting that heavenly assistance that allows the scales of the imbalance of our passions to be corrected with the weight of a true devotion to God. Carry on. Don't lose your head. My brothers and sisters, let us strive let us strive as Christians to inculcate within ourselves such inner peace, such presence of mind with God, that we, like the Baptist, may be ready to accept whatever comes our way, without fear, without fear of retribution, without tribulation, because we know the truth and we know that the truth will ultimately set us free. The truth will set us free from our passions and our lusts. The truth will set us free from the imprisonment of ourselves that is our ego, that is our vanity and our pride. The truth will enable us to recognise and to see the world and situations as they truly are. And help us to view them and approach them accordingly, adjusting 
to every given situation by being able to see through it by holding on to the vision of heaven and the prospect of eternal life. Carry on. Don't lose your head, my brothers and sisters, to the whims and fancies of this world. They are all but fleeting. As the wonderful hymn Abide With Me says, all around I see death and decay in all around I see. That is the world, my brothers and sisters. Don't give in to the foolish pursuit of material comfort and riches. Rather, keep your eye on that greater prize, on that greater treasure in heaven, which in so doing enables us to bear all things, endure all things. For where our treasure is, there is our heart also. And where our heart should be is in the heart of Jesus, in the heart of God. That should be our soul's desire. And by holding on to that vision, by holding on to that prize, we can keep our heads and carry on through this life, despite all its trials and tribulations. Because we know that ultimately, what matters is not to be here, not to be found on earth, not to be among these things which, cons cons be which are consumed and decay, of these things that we cannot take with us. If you can keep your head when all around you are losing theirs. Brothers and sisters, let us carry on and not lose our heads. but instead aim to achieve through balance in this life that wholeness and perfection which God desired us from all eternity to enjoy with him for all eternity. Let us stay on the straight and narrow path through all the trials and tribulations of this life, keeping our eye on that place where truly our heart desires to be. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Dominus Vobiscum, et cum Spirito Tu, Cordemus. <coughs> In virtute Tua Domine, let habitu justus et super salutare Tua mixotabe vehementa, desiderium anima eus tribuisti.
Romnia secula seculorum. Amen. Nominus obiscum et cum spirito tu, sus un corda, habemus et dominum, classis agamus domino Deo nostro, dignum et justum eis. Vere dignum et justum et ei come salutare, nos dibi sempre dubico et gracias agere, domine sante pater, non difutens et terre Deus. Per Christum dominum nostrum, precum et statum tuum lauda d'angeli, adorando un azione estremum tuo d'estates. Cedi cerunque vedute et obbligate serfim, socis ut azione concelibant. Con cui vos e nostri svocis, vos e miti vesca e precamur, supplici confessione dicente. Sanctus. 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 Dominus Deus Semeate, plenis un cieli et terra, gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis. Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis.
ritual PPP itu ori buci. Receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen.
possibisti domine in capite eius coronon de lapite precios. Un dominus obiscum et cum spirito tu. Ordemus. Anferat nobis domine sancti Giovannis baptiste solemnitas, ute magnifica sacramenta, quae sum simul significata veneremur, et in nobis potius edita gaudeamus. Per domino nostrum Iesum Christum filium tuum, qui te convivida regna ad unenitatis ritus sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum, Amen. Orde Pus. Divini muderis lascitatis assiasti caesmus Domine Deus nostre, ut intercedente beata Sabina Martire tua, in eu sempre veta participazione vivamus. Per Domino nostrum Iesum Christum filium tuum, qui te convivida regno ad unenitatis spiritus sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Un domino suo viscum et cum spirito tuo, in te misa est, neo grazias. In nome domini benedictum, et sovnum cotus quae in secula, auditorum nostrum in nomine domini, cui feci celum et teram, benedica et vos omnipotens Deus. Pater et filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. In Domino Suo Piscum, et cum Spirito Tuo, inizium Sancti Evangelii secundum Giovanni, Gloria Tibi Domine. In principio, ora et bebum, et bebum, et abo Deum, et Deus are bebum, hoc erat in principio ad Deum, omni primsum factus sunt, e simso factus nilugo factum est. In ipso vice erat, e vice erat, us haumin, e lus in tenebris luce, et in tenebris non comprehende erum. Tu es homo messo sedere con noi, ma non raggio e anna es. E che venete in testimoni, ma tu testimoni vi fere, tu lumine, donne spredo, non tu ilum. Non è reti dei russi, tu testimoni vi fere, tu lumine. Era il russo, era il coi lumine, donne, ma amine, non viene niente, ma non fu un lum. E mondo e l'altro, mondo spripso un fatto, se il mondo si non come gli occhi. E un proprio venete il suo nome in ciperum. Quattro quattro temi in ciperum, tem des forestati, un figlio stai fieri, che esco il tren di nome ne eus. Qui non è sanguinibus, né volontati canis, né volontati viris, e ne deonati sunt. Et verbum carro factum est, et habitavit in nobis e vinimus gloria, meus gloria, in quadrino genete e patri, per un grazia e veritatis. Neo grazias. Amen. Amen. If you grace the Lord is with thee, blessed are all among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. How Mary, if you grace the Lord is with thee, blessed are all among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. How Mary, if you grace the Lord is with thee, blessed are all among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor valley's children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this web of tears. Turn, then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, who art our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on thy people who cry to thee by the intercession of the glorious and blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, of thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all thy saints. In mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Michael, Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all wicked spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. 
May St. John the Baptist pray for us, St. Catherine of Stenning pray for us, St. Wilfred of York pray for us, St. Richard of Chichester pray for us, St. Louis of Alfriston pray for us, Our Lady of Walsingham pray for us, St. Sabina pray for us, Our Holy Guardian Angels pray for us, Our Heavenly Patron Saints pray for us, Our Lady Queen of Heaven, all the angels and saints pray for us. Thank you. 